who is the chief equity strategist, uh, uh, a specialist in emerging markets. And it looks like uh, the stock markets uh, are extremely happy to hear you. Today they've given you a, a kind of a triple thumbs up. Uh, uh, three indices are up over 1% and quite out of the blue. The best performing market today is India with the, the Sensex up 1%, mid caps up 1.2%, Bank Nifty up 1.6%. Okay, on that note, Bank Nifty doing very well, obviously a proxy for the economy. Uh, Louis, uh, you heard the finance minister, you all heard the chief economic advisor. Uh, what is your key takeaway in terms of the India growth story? I think that the authorities, my sense is that they recognize that they have a challenge ahead, that they need to keep uh, uh, you know, the reform momentum going just to, in the hope of reigniting uh, private sector investment. That is the part that is lacking. And even though you know, the headline growth number is still st expected to stay above seven, between seven and seven and a half percent, which is good, uh, this is not sustainable if it is only relying on consumption, on public uh, uh, spending and investment. Private investment needs to react. And that is where we're still seeing the, you know, the, the biggest challenge. I was, uh, uh, you know, for me it was possible to hear that they recognize that as a challenge. They know that there is an issue with uh, uh, corporate balance sheets. There is an issue with bank balance sheets that needs to be addressed. And to the extent that they work in that direction, the hope is that, you know, eventually you will see a reaction from the private sector side. Mm -hmm. I think that is the key thing to watch. And certainly when we get cl uh, investors from around the world asking questions about India, is exactly okay. Is the reform momentum going to lead? to that outcome to see in the in the quarters and years ahead private sector finally starting to react and putting money to work here in India okay well uh, uh, Sunil uh, therefore what will be the sectoral pick as uh, Lewis says uh, capex is a bit uh, a distance away so what do you all prefer at this juncture so I think you know before you get to capex and I think what Lewis is also referring to is we've had a leverage challenge in certain infrastructure corporate balance sheets so that certainly takes some time to come through but you don't need to wait for uh, that deleveraging to take place to play that same trend and we think cement is definitely a, a, an area where you can get the benefit in fact we think there is a lot of optimism that we have on cement across multiple countries India being one of them uh, I think we go back to the basics and we are I think at the start of a new credit cycle and banks will be at the heart of any recovery I think the RBI is policies in uh, terms of being accommodative but more importantly I think one of the messages that's coming clearly out of the policy makers is that the bank reform and the recapitalization is very high on the agenda and I think that's extremely important. So you're buying PSU banks as well? I, I would at this stage in the cycle I would be buying across the board financials including PSU banks. We all know the challenges relating to the capital and NPAs that is not a new story but I do think that if you look the incremental the first derivative from here that is going to be positive and I would absolutely be looking at the entire financial sector including the PSU banks. Okay. My colleague Sonia uh, has more questions for you. Well, uh, Sunil, Louis, hi, I'm Sonia from the Bombay studio. Uh, Sunil, I just wanted to check with you on the other theme that's played out very well, which is the consumption theme. Because even right now, as we speak, you know, many of these auto stocks are sitting at new highs, Bajaj Auto, Hero Motor Corp, etc. Um, uh, uh, what is your preference within this theme itself? Look, within, I think we, we like consumer discretionary in general. And so very clearly, we have essentially moved away from a defensive stance. I think in the past we've been talking about staples, we've been talking about IT, healthcare, and at this point in time, we're absolutely on the other end of the spectrum. So we do want to play cyclicals, deep cyclicals, near cyclicals, and also the consumer discretionary stocks. So the auto stocks will be part of it, and I appreciate that these uh, companies' uh, stocks have done really well, but we would still be very much uh, long this space at the moment. Okay. One more question uh, before I hand it back to Lata. With regards to the IT space, you did mention that you're underweight on that space. But do you think the days of uh, the IT sector being a big wealth creator are now behind us? And have these companies reduced from, you know, 20, 30 percent growth companies now to 10, 15 percent? Is that a new normal that we need to look at? Perhaps an even lower growth rate, I guess. So we definitely have seen a more mature growth come through. I don't think that's a negative, but I think as an industry grows to a particular size, you do definitely see a maturing in growth, and that's that's what we're witnessing here. 
Okay. Oh, well, a final question to you, Lewis. Uh, uh, you know, we did get feelers from the Commerce Ministry uh, that uh, they would like a depreciated rupee. Now, perhaps nothing will be done immediately because we have uh, 26 billion of FCNR deposits that will flow out. But if the Reserve Bank would actively buy dollars, uh, uh, as a foreign investor, how would you look, or, and as an economist, how would you look at any, uh, you know, strained efforts to keep the rupee depreciated? Well, from a macro perspective, India probably does need a little bit of a weaker currency in order to keep uh, the, uh, some, some further support for, for, for exports. You know, as we know, exchange rate cannot be you know, the sole support for, for growth, mm -hmm. but it certainly helps. And, uh, and I think that that is probably what is motivating these kind of comments, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from uh, looking at uh, real effective exchange rate models. Uh, you know, the, the, the rupee looks to be, you know, maybe on the weak side of, uh, sorry, on the strong side of fair value, so maybe some weakening will be would be welcomed the issue here is that uh, 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 as you said you know the central bank is accumulating uh, uh, reserves this is one reason why foreigners are not uh, they're not uh, opening the, the gates to foreign capital portfolio capital you know that much because they don't want to have to increase the pace of uh, reserve accumulation you know accumulating the challenge so at this stage I would say that investors are hoping that the authorities at some point revisit this quota system for accessing you know the <laughs> fixed income market that government bond uh, uh, market that is precluding India from being included in these global indices. We just don't feel that in this environment where actually the dynamics is for currency appreciation, <laughs> which authorities want to prevent, uh, we're going to see that, uh, that happening. So I think that <laughs> foreign investors that would love to tap in a bigger way the local government bond market, they're just going to need to be patient and wait. <laughs> oh yes, uh, on that note I can assure you that the one, page, the one point 